Hi, welcome. It is the Nish Jackson Show. I'm Rusty Humphreys, just here hanging out, or hanging out for the ride. She's Nish Jackson, <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, this is a part two. This is a two-part uh, series here. The brain. The brain. Yo, yo, yo. The brain. <laughs> Because the last show, you couldn't get all the brain stuff you wanted to get in, right? We're going to brain out again. We're going to brain And we got to do the 100 breaths, which was a big thing that you learned at your uh, at your camp. That's right. Was Bill Murray at the camp? Was that Camp <laughs> North Star? Oh, man, I wish. And, and you know what? It kind of fits, you know? It just doesn't matter. It just <laughs> doesn't matter. It, that's kind of the message of the camp, wasn't it? Of the retreat. Oh my gosh, totally. You know, I, I have to say, I don't think I have belly laughed as much as I did in those eight days. I laughed and cried and all sorts of other things so much, but the laughing was so therapeutic. I mean, it really was. People aren't laughing enough. I mean, I, it doesn't sound, I mean, no offense, but Camp Rhythmia does not sound like a, you know, a, a stand-up comedy club. <laughs> Definitely not a stand-up comedy, but it was so. There were so many funny times, and a lot of it was just it was a lot of just just watching people go through it and connecting with people. Oh my gosh, Rusty, I I I can't believe I'm going to admit this, but I <laughs> I admit a lot of stuff on this show. I cannot believe my eyes were opened up in that week to how vitally important human connection is hmm. like vitally, like for, for longevity and for happiness for people just to live longer. There's one necessity for people to live longer. There's the, there's one really important ingredient more than anything else in the whole world. And that's human connection. And guess what? With these things today, yeah. we don't have enough human connection. We're like we're connected to our phone. All right. So what and you're telling me is as a single guy in his 50s whose kids have all moved out of the house, I'm just counting down the minutes. I might as well. <laughs> it's it's about over for me. Huh? Yeah. It's a, you might go tomorrow. Yeah. I'm thinking maybe even in the middle of this show. Yeah, good for your ratings, though. <laughs> and you, then you, he you, died. No. <laughs> Yeah, human connection. And we had this massive overdose of human connection that week. And I just realized this is the part I can't believe I'm going to admit yeah. is that I think and, and I think a lot of people in business today or people that are just kind of going through their life. I, I think a lot of my human connection with people, with the exception of some people, some some very close people. I think a lot of my human connections were because I was getting something from that. I will, I'm going to agree to be with you because you're going to give this to me. And that happens a lot in today's world because it's not just genuine. I want to hang out with you for a while. It's like, I'll do this and I'll fit it into my jammed up schedule because I'm going to get something from you. Right. And that's like, that's awful. That's an awful way to be because human connection is the most precious, precious thing that we have access to and we don't use it enough enough and it's getting worse it's getting worse it's like fading away and and hanging out with somebody and really being present not hanging out with them and like answering it oh i don't worry i'm listening as they're you know on their phone it's not that it's yeah. like it's like it's like um i love the movie avatar my most favorite movie really? is avatar and you know how they like connect up, you know, they would come and they would, you know, like, like cord, cord up together yeah. and then they would go, I see you. And what they meant was, I can see you. Like, I see you for who you are. And mm. that's like, that's like a really cool human connection is when you see someone like you really can see them. And that means you're with them in that moment. Yeah. And, and that sounds kind of like, Oh, it's like kind of out there, but it's not. It's like we really need that for our health. And I just came away from that thinking, wow, that's really something I'm going to work on is human, more human connection and more authentic yeah. human connection, did, you know, where you're really there. Did we did we talk about um, uh, the Mr. Rogers documentary? Did I tell you this story? Because it's no. exactly what you're talking about. This one guy was uh, and I loved Mr. Rogers. I don't know if you did, but I, I love the guy. Did you love Mr. Rogers? I, oh my gosh, I was faithful to that show. Yes. And did I you mean faithful? Did you see the documentary that came out about him a year ago? No. You've got to see. It's called Won't You Be My Neighbor. But there was another one that I saw on Amazon Prime. Uh -huh. And this journalist 
was interviewing Mr. Rogers on the phone. He was going to go into the house and hang out with him, but they did a kind of a pre thing on the phone. And the guy said, and Mr. Rogers says, uh, so Jim, your name's Jim Jones, right? Yeah. Jim Jones, whatever. Says, do you know what the most important thing in the world to me is? No. Talking to Jim Jones right now. And at first what the guy thought was, okay, Mr. Rogers being, you know, Mr. Rogers. But what he was saying was, was whenever he was with somebody for that moment in time, that person was the most important thing in his life. Right. What a great lesson. And that's what you're talking about. And it's something we all should probably get better at. Right. Don't you think I agree? Don't you think that's why he and his little train were so popular? (laughs) Because you could feel that on that show. I mean, Mm -hmm. it was total cornball show, right? It was cornball, but it was so like you were so dialed in because you could just feel the energy coming from him. Like he was really connected up with his audience. And I just think, I think that's so cool that we all have the ability to do that, but we don't really allow ourselves the time and the energy Mm -hmm. and the patience to do it. And I, I'm going to be dedicated to doing that because I think that's, that's really important. Yeah, it's a great, great lesson. All right, so yeah, you are, uh, so we, we got into the heart a little, or the brain, excuse me. We got into the brain a little bit. <laughs> brain, <And> heart, soul. Brain. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, were, we just did a little thing on the heart right there. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we, you were talking about the brain, and before in the last show, if you if you missed it, go back, because you don't want to. Um, but you're, you you were really kind of focused on there's all these different things going on, and so we're not really giving our brain, um, what, the fuel to be able to think properly? Right. So one thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about today is eight things that can happen to your brain when you're under stress. So eight Let me ways, ask you, do you basic- have like eight things that would happen to your brain if you're under stress, like a, like a list or something? Just a night. Just a yeah, kind slightly, of slightly slightly delayed. <laughs> nice preamp. What are the eight no. things? Yeah, eight ways that stress can cause your brain to be sick. That's okay. what I want to talk about. Let's just get it out. Okay. Yes. Okay, number one. I'm gonna read them. Stress depletes you of precious brain chemicals like serotonin and dopamine that cause depression and anxiety. So there is a connection between stress and and depletion of the brain chemicals that you need to not be stressed and anxious. Hmm. Uh, good example, I did a I did a national podcast earlier today, and the uh, and and the host of the show told me that her best friend was really experiencing toxic stress. She's a high executive, a lot of pressure, two children at home, um, you know, not a lot, not enough support in the home, you know, and outside the home. And uh, she was feeling super anxious and not sleeping, which makes you even more anxious. So she goes into her doctor. She tells her doctor, I don't know what's wrong with me. I can't get back to who I was. I can't get back to the, but to the person that used to be able to handle this kind of stress. Well, hello, because you're not that same person because now too much time has gone on and you've depleted your brain chemicals and not replaced them. So she goes into her doctor and she gets a prescription for Lexapro to try to help that anxiety. Ah, wrong answer. Why? That's, a not, that's not what you should be doing unless it's life or death. Like that is a rescue drug. Hmm. What, what should happen is let's talk about what's going on in your life. Let's talk about what neurobrain chemical you might be low in and let's replace that naturally with some adjustment of some, maybe some lifestyle habits that you could easily implement breathing, eating well, turning your brain off 10 minutes a day, taking some time out in the afternoon, walking outside into nature, which is unbelievably, unbelievably healing. And maybe we can use Lexapro as the backup plan Hmm, because the problem is Lexapro has all sorts of side effects that cause ongoing problems, including hormone depletion. It depletes your body of testosterone, which women need to be strong, Hmm. emotionally strong. So anyway, okay, I won't get off on that. That's okay. You're on a roll. You're on a roll, Nisha. Keep going, baby. Keep going. (laughs) 
Serotonin is related to depression and anxiety. It's also related to lack of zest and enthusiasm. It causes cravings, lack of motivation for life. So there, it's really kind of an important brain chemical to have optimal, but stress lowers it, number one. Number two, stress halts the production of new brain cells. Hmm. I'm going to say that again. Stress halts the production of new brain cells. So that's why in one the of my world, big problems. Why in the world would we want a smaller brain? I'll, I'm going to take every single ounce of brain gray matter that I can get, right? Because right. I need it. Why would we let stress reduce the amount of new brain cells or the size of our brain? Because both of them go down with stress. But there's just so many ways that you can reduce your body's reaction to stress, which would help these two things not happen, which we'll talk about in a minute. So that's number two. Number three, chronic stress. And this this actually can happen with acute stress too. Chronic and acute stress cause brain fog and emotional instability. Hmm. So if you're wondering why you're jammed up in your brain or why you can't remember things, or why you just kind of like walking around in a fog. This is a really common problem, by the way, Rusty. Okay. A lot of people have the inability to concentrate. A lot of people have an inability to focus, and they think they have ADD, and it's really stress. It's stress. They're not slowing down and taking one thing at a time while they're focusing on one thing at a time, they're, they're processing too many things, and then they're wondering why they're foggy in their brain. Okay. It, also, it also could be because, because they're not sleeping at night, and that is a form of stress. Okay, number four. Stress increases the radical damage to our brain. I'll what, say that again. Yeah, that's, what do you mean? That, that's really straightforward. Stress increases radical damage to our brain. So when you're under stress, and, and stress really should be defined, you know, it's kind of individual. It's a personal thing. Right. Sometimes it could be one specific event, like your child becomes very ill. You have serious financial issues. You're going through a divorce. You are having problems with a child that has gone off the deep end. Uh, maybe you're dealing with an emotional issue with your mother, which is ongoing and your mother ain't getting it. <laughs> it could be it could be that you are you have a very high stress job and you can never meet all of the performance expectations. Or maybe it's just you're literally, which is my life, you're literally going from one thing to the next without a break. You're just on you're just back to back on everything. You get up in the morning, you jump out of bed. You get the lunches ready. Well, I don't do that anymore, but yeah. you, with kids, with kids, my kids are gone. And, you know, you're just literally going from one thing to the next. So when you're under that kind of stress or any of those examples, your body is increasing free radicals and free radicals are killer cells. Okay. Mm. They kill the good stuff. We don't need to be killing any good stuff, but that's what happens with our brain on stress. Okay. Number five, stress makes your brain small. It really literally makes your brain small. We've got excellent scientific evidence that this is true. You heard it right here. Stress makes your brain small. And the research continues to show that high stress halts, like I said, making new brain cells and the neural, the neural pathways that help your brain focus and go between the right and the left brain fluidly. And, and we need to keep that in check. And I really believe why we're seeing more dementia and why we're seeing more cognitive decline early in people. That's not really dementia and it's not really Alzheimer's, but it's cognitive decline is because we're jamming ourselves up with stress. It makes your brain small. We don't need a small brain. Okay. Number six, yeah. stress increases the chance that you will have Alzheimer's and dementia. One in three U.S. seniors will die of Alzheimer's or some form of dementia. One in three. Wow. And you think it's okay, stress. It's not the food. It's not the chemicals. It, you think it's stress. It's on the rise. Okay. So should, we should be careful what we're doing with our brain, and we should be thinking about our brain, because I honestly can say to you, Rusty, I'd rather lose anything than my brain. Sure. That's got to be true for most people, right? Like, right. What can you do if you don't have a brain? You'd be the scarecrow. Right. <laughs> be like Mike okay. Tyson. <laughs> okay, stress can lead to a toxic waste site in the brain. 
Every cell in your body is sensitive to toxins, but the brain is on top of the list when it comes to sensitivity. We have a brain filter that normally keeps us safe, but when this barrier is compromised by stress, there's no filter. Hmm. So now our brain is exposed to the toxins that are created by stress. Also very scientifically proven already. And the last one, stress causes the brain to become inflamed. We know a lot about inflammation in the body. Inflammation causes pain. Inflammation causes high cholesterol. Inflammation is the start of most diseases. But guess what? The brain can become inflamed and then the brain doesn't work well. And it diseases, it causes disease of the brain. So, I'm, okay. I'm stressed. I was going to say, you're stressed out just doing that th- report. Okay, so um, I don't want to be stressed anymore. That's uh, obvious, but that's right. easier said than done, right? Right, right. I mean, so I do once- 100 breaths. <laughs> um, so one of... So one of the things that I think are really important is to start talking about how how can we get ourselves back? Like, what are some of the things that we can do that would be really, really good for our brain? And um, and what are some of the things that we're doing that's really bad for our brain? And so one of the things right off the top of the list that, that many people aren't doing is getting a really good uh, um, um, uh, essential fatty acid in their diet. So a, a perfect combination of omega-3, 6, and 9. Okay. So omega uh, fatty acid. And I like Udo's oil, U-D-O, Udo's oil. I believe it's like the perfect combination. There's other ones out there that you can have. Uh, but a daily uh, serving or servings of essential fatty acids are really important because your brain thrives on them. The other thing that I would recommend that is pretty easy for everybody to do is stop eating sugar. Because sugar is like stress. Sugar causes your neural brain chemicals to be imbalanced. It causes a rise in serotonin, then an immediate drop, and then it just starts that habituation process. Okay, just just stop. Just stop eating sugar. Just stop eating it. If I you mean, put something in your, I just am, I'm just going to challenge you guys. Every single time you put something in your mouth, I want you to ask: Is this in my highest and best interest for my brain? Okay. Now, is this going to feed my brain or take away from my brain? Which one is it? Because it's only you got a 50-50. Okay. Now, uh, just about anything that's that's processed or you get in the store is going to have some kind of sugar in it, isn't it? Or the corn no. syrup? No. No. Shop the perimeter of the grocery store because all the good stuff's in the perimeter of the grocery store. We got fruits, vegetables. We got whole grains. We got nuts. We Pop got tarts. seeds. Every, everything's on the perimeter. So shop the perimeter. And stick with stuff that you know has not been all messed up by man. Okay. You know, all altered. Do you, so, is there any kind of are there any vegetables that you like better than others, or fruits that you? Well, go- I my problem is I like every single food maybe on the planet uh, on the planet, but um, uh, colorful foods are the best. So and eating a lot of greens. Like green, I've heard, beets are really good. Beets are good. Just eat. Real food. I think that's the message. Let's just keep it simple. Eat real food. Okay. Don't eat fake food. Just don't eat packaged food, okay? Unless it's 100% organic. Uh, you know, I can't remember the name of those coconut clusters. You can get them at Costco. Oh, my God. They're so good. They're they're just coconut clusters, but they're all it's all seeds. Okay. And it's organic. It's gluten-free. It's just, it's they're so excellent. Now, that would be an example of a packaged food that's actually good for you. You know what I saw in the store the other day? I can't believe it. And I may have to buy one bag because I don't think you're going to believe it either. I saw a bag that looked like in the potato chip section, in the chip section, but it was made of bugs. Oh, yummy. Thanks for sharing. No, it's, it's in a real store. It bugs? wasn't. Yes, I'm going to bring it next week because I still can't believe that they have those. And it's like, really? Now, maybe that's healthy. It's protein, I guess. Well, I, I, I don't think we're going to allow the bugs on the show. I, maybe maybe I could do a little research on that first, Rusty, before we I'm like, going to show you the bag. bag. I don't think we should let that one out you of the bag yet. Yeah, thank you. You don't even <laughs> want to see the bag. So you've never heard of that one. No. Okay. No. Okay. Insufficient protein in the diet. Okay. Some all you protein. vegans out there oh. and all you vegetarians, I am kind of concerned. Okay. Why? Because, 
because I feel I'm not generalizing and I'm not and I'm not judging. But vegans and vegetarians and a whole bunch of people that are not either one of those people are not focusing on healthy, lean proteins in their diet. Well, guess where all of your amino acids come from? Well, no, can't not, can't all, not right? all not all of them, but most of the. But good can't ones they come... just take supplements then? I mean, if they don't want to eat meat. Um, yes, I mean there are some ways to combine vegetarian options, but here's the deal. And again, I'm not generalizing, but I will say that it takes a lot of work as a vegan and a lot of work, even um, more work as a vegan, a little less work as a vegetarian to get essential proteins in your diet. And why proteins are important is because proteins have amino acids and amino acids are direct precursors to all of your neuro brain chemicals. Hmm. So if you want brain chemicals and optimal balance, you've got to have protein in your diet. You have to. Now, you come from Southern Oregon, where I'm guessing yes. you run into this a, a bunch, right? Do you run yes. into a lot of vegans and yes. stuff? H- yes. How does it affect them? I mean, they always say, oh, I'm living Mother Earth and meat is murder and it's terrible. Obviously, yeah. I'm not a vegetarian. Uh, but I'm curious, what do you see in people that are vegans and vegetarians? Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to say if you live a vegan or vegetarian lifestyle the right way, you can be really healthy and really balanced. But I'm just saying I don't think most people do that because it's very time consuming. Uh, and And it takes a fair amount of education to understand how to get an essential protein. Okay. So that's my only concern is I think a lot of people are just living on carbs. They're living on bread and they're living on chips and they're living on crackers, which is all carbohydrates and it's not helping your brain. So just I'm just challenging you to try to get some good essential proteins in your diet, whether they be vegetarian or animal proteins. Okay. I, prefer the, I prefer the animal, but whatever. I'm with you. Okay. So um, the other thing is magnesium deficiency. So magnesium is really important because the very foods and the drinks that you're probably drinking on a regular basis are robbing magnesium from your body. And magnesium is essential for making serotonin, which keeps you from getting depressed and anxious. Hmm. Basic. So if you have constipation, and you have depression or you're kind of just a little blue or you're feeling anxious, it's possible that you're low in magnesium or even if you have cravings that you'd like to get rid of. So magnesium deficiency is likely the cause and we all should be on magnesium anyway. And how do you, so, I know if I have magnesium deficiency, what, what should I be looking for? Well, just those things. So if you're feeling anxious, you're not sleeping as well at night, you're having constipation, maybe you're feeling depressed, you have cravings, you might be low in magnesium. Okay. Uh, now, just knowing that magnesium is essential for making serotonin. So so don't take magnesium in the morning because, and don't take it with a lot of other supplements because it can bind to other supplements. Take it at night when you go to bed, like four to 600 milligrams. And I'm telling you, you'll start pooping really well because that stuff really helped your stool come right out. It's awesome. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, so that's good because we don't need poop uh, stuck up there for days and weeks. And By the months. way, have you had a colonic lately? I know that was a big thing. You want to do them like once a week or something. <laughs> no, it was once a month. Was it once a month? Well, or once a week would be oh, fine, but I know I know you don't want to do it once a week, but I I think that <laughs> I think once a month would be good. Okay, all right. That was that was one that you should, you learned at the camp too, at the summer camp with Bill Murray. <laughs> That's right. Uh, uh, the arrhythmia camp. Okay, so I'm going to talk about an herb right now, ginkgo biloba. Ginkgo biloba is really, or some people call it biloba. Okay. Ginkgo biloba is a really good herb that promotes oxygen to the brain. Who couldn't use a little bit more oxygen in the brain? Now, I can teach you how to put oxygen in your brain by doing breaths, 100 breaths, which Mm -hmm. we're going to do in just a minute. Uh, But it does improve memory. It does improve concentration. Um, It it actually is really good for the brain. So you might want to think about that. And I'm going to end because there's about 18,000 more things I could say. But I'm going to end on my last tip of the day for the brain. Okay. I'm ready. My favorite. It's my favorite tip. One ounce of chocolate at three o'clock in the afternoon is the most amazing thing you can do for your brain. Okay. Can it be any kind? Does it have to be dark chocolate? Can it be Hershey's? Yes. Okay. Yes. Any kind. Dark. 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 Okay. Dark. We're going dark. 
Now We're I can, going black. Okay, now <laughs> I like the Hershey's special dark, but when it starts getting darker than that, it's a little bit too strong for yeah, me. Yeah, no, okay, like seventy percent and up is acceptable. Okay, but not. I wouldn't get into that. I wouldn't get into the milk chocolate and all that. We wouldn't really want to get something from it. We want it. We want to get some good antioxidants. What, what do you from get it? from it? What what? Why are you saying? I mean, everybody's going, yay! I really love Nishanao, but what what is the reasoning behind it? Yeah, so the dark chocolate is really good for raising dopamine. And dopamine kind of gives you a little bit of a lift, a little bit of a bump in your in your day. And 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 we've talked a lot about serotonin, but dopamine is kind of like the sister to serotonin, and the two should be in balance. They're like brother and sister. They should be traveling together, or maybe husband and wife. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> they should be traveling together. And and sometimes we get a little up on one or a little down on the other. So so a one ounce of dark chocolate in the afternoon, or some people prefer to have it in the evening. Okay. But it does give you a little bit of a lift, and I have found that people feel really good, and and they have a tendency to not have to have sugar after dinner, which is the habit people get into. Is like I've had my dinner now, I just want dessert. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, a lot of us were brought up that way. Our, our moms were like amazing mothers, right? They. A lot of our moms were amazing. My mom was amazing. She fixed dessert every night of the week. I mean, you know, it was the How best awesome mom ever. How awesome is that? Right. Yeah, was, she was the best mom ever. She is the best mom. And so, but but you become like that's ingrained in you. Like I just have to have a little something sweet after dinner. So try having one ounce of dark chocolate instead of maybe having a, hey, instead of maybe ha- having a um a big piece of chocolate cake instead. Right. Milkshake. Yeah. Milkshake yeah, probably milkshake. not as good. You, what if it's chocolate malt? That's chocolate not, malt. I mean, the yeah. malt may be better. Yeah, you probably you not. you always take my suggestion and you just kind of go to And just far. ruin it. I ruin it. <laughs> okay, if you want to find out more about Nisha Jackson, nishajackson.com. Also, you've got the Peak Medical Clinics, and they're starting to pop up everywhere, right? They're, they were expanding, which is good. Wait, where to? We got, we got Oregon, Southern Oregon. Oregon. We're going to Montana and we're going to Texas. Okay. Are you in Texas Look yet? Look out. We're coming to Montana and Ooh. Texas. And, and then uh, um, Palm Springs too soon. Or is it there already? That one's a little bit on hold. But oh. yes, okay. uh, the, we're working Texas and Montana right now. And I want to I want to make sure people know how to breathe. Oh, oh yeah. Do the, do the do the 100 breaths, them. please. Yes. All right. I'm I ready. I promise them. All right. Let's do, okay. a, let's do a focus on you. Okay. Let's. Okay. Right, you got Super simple. All right. Super simple. 100 breaths, you can do it once a day or you can do it twice a day. I'm choosing to do it twice a day. I might, as I get acclimated back into work, I could be doing this all day long. I don't know. <laughs> but but for sure, do it at bedtime because it's going to help you sleep at night and it's so good for your brain. So you want to open your mouth, like about that, that wide. And you want to breathe in, not so your chest goes up, but your belly goes out. So it's much easier to do when you're laying down, but... Basically, you want to do continuous breaths, focusing on your inhale a little bit less than your exhale. So it's like this. About that fast. Okay. And you want to do 100 of them. Did that did that look really silly? No, I it, that. It, didn't look, like, it did not look silly at all. It may have been the hottest thing I've ever seen, but <laughs> it did not look silly. That I promise. <laughs> Okay, a hundred of them that last like three and a half minutes to five minutes. It's pretty fast. What you're doing is you're bringing oxygen in all over your brain and all over the cells in your body, and it'll just put you into this nice zen state to be able to sleep deeper. And do it again in the morning because it's a great way of doing it while you're focusing on your intentions for the day of being as healthy as you possibly can be. That's Asking awesome. yourself, is this good for me or is this bad for me? That's awesome. Everything All right. you do. Yes, everything you do. All right, Nisha Jackson is her name. Uh, the website, give it to me one more time, if you would please. NishaJackson.com That's or easy. Peak, PeakMedicalClinic.com. Okay. And uh, if you missed Brain, the Brain Show Part 1, you might want to go back and find it either on YouTube or google play or radio.com or itunes and we're we're expanding the podcast all over the place both video and audio and do us a favor would you and do yourself and your family and friends a favor tell family and friends about the nisha jackson show although you still want to change the name or is this good now because i don't know uh, we're kind of we're stuck on the nisha jackson show whatever that means i i yeah i mean uh, i don't know it could be the nisha jackson experience you guys 
you guys text in or Facebook in or whatever in your ideas. I don't know. Maybe we can come up with some brilliant, brilliant, the brilliant show. I don't know. You know it's already brilliant. All right. Nisha Jackson's her name. My name is Rusty Embrys. Thank you very much. We'll catch you next time here on the Nisha Bye. Jackson Show. Bye-bye.